Welcome, welcome, welcome to the 36 Chambers of Fatherhood show. I am your host, Scuba Bell, the Papa Dandada. Today, okay. <laughs> I didn't that one. today, today, it is only Steve and I. I would usually swing it over to our other co host, Big Sean, the empty chair. old head, the empty chair aside across from me unfortunately he can't be in he had to handle some business um like, but, like a grown-ass father would do exactly like a grown-ass father would do however we do have the greatest engineer ever who is steve yes i'm the man behind the r squared network boom the man behind I, i'm the trying R-squared. to become an evil villain so you know that's you got to start small <laughs> and yo, you're you're doing your thing. Our, our square guy. He's like, yeah, no, you're evil. Yeah, <laughs> you are evil. You're you're there already. Uh, I I don't want to put out what you got working on, but whew. dang. Uh, yeah, man. So I'm gonna call up Trump one day and be like one billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So today we are talking about date night. But before we get into date night, um, we were just all in a group text talking and uh, sharing some information, some news. And I don't want this to be like a, a little gossip center, but we oh always boy. have to look at other dads and be like, damn, what the hell's going on over there? Yeah, boy. So what's good with Fab? Man, Fab had had the had the had the blinky blow out. Yeah, so so um and the reason this relates is because apparently he got into an altercation with his longtime girlfriend, possibly wife. Mother of his child. Two children. I think children. two, right? Yeah. And, uh, you know, they got into uh, altercation and her father was there. Mm-hmm. And so my question around this whole thing, because I don't know what that was about, although I will say there's no reason for things to get turned up that much. Mm-hmm. Uh, my only real question, though, is do you argue with your woman, your girlfriend, your wife, the mother of your child, whoever she is to you, in front of her parents. Is that a thing? Is that allowed? Is that is that Yeah, depending on the argument though, but um, you know, in that case, the dad was there to protect his daughter and um obviously uh from the video it looks like Fab did have a knife out. So that, you know, her father had to be there. There was bodyguards there too as well. And um I think the father did say that, you know, Fab looked at him like, "Why are you even here?" And the dad said, "That's my that's my mother effing daughter. That's my mother effing daughter." Um, so he was obviously there to protect her. But the big question I think is is that yo, what would make you so angry <laughs> to come at her with a knife, especially come from, coming from Fab? Because we've seen we haven't really seen Fab get into any public altercations in except that way, Ray J. except for Ray J. And even I think there was like a small video, but he kind of even looked chill about that situation a little bit, you know. I mean- if you got into something with Ray J, would you really... Not really, yeah. You wouldn't even take but, it that but serious. I, th- I think the larger point is, and this goes for anybody that, that has children and, and or is just, you know, you have a, a, a significant other in your life. There's no reason, there's nothing anybody could do, I think anyway, to take it that far. To take it where you're threatening lives and there's, you know, accounts of people's you know, um, teeth getting punched out. Getting punched like, out. Physical like, abuse. Like, first, like, he is, a, a, you know, a semi, like, he's a famous rapper, right? Like, he's a semi-celebrity, right? Yeah. And what, like, what, what could anybody have done to make you take things that far? And, you know, we saw this the other day with that baseball player in the stairwell. Like, uh, there's no, there's, I just don't see any, like, excuse for it. Even if she did, like, even if she cheated on you, just say, you know, F you. And then, and then go. You can find somebody else. Like, what, what, I don't, I don't see it. I don't get it. I think I it's. I don't know what could take it, take it that far. I think, um, you know, the relationship built between, you know, obviously um, anyone who's in a relationship, they're building, a, um, you know, trust. And if someone does break that trust, which, you know, reportedly Fab has broken that trust many a times um, in his relationship, I'm not sure if that was. I don't think that 
her stepping out would have resulted in that type of behavior. I think it's a little deeper than that. Um, but, you know, if that was the case, if he did get upset about her stepping out, then, you know, we don't know. We don't see videos of Emily, you know, wielding knives. Maybe she did. You know, maybe that's that's a, that's the base of their of their relationship behind closed doors, and it just you know leaked out. We don't know. I, I get it, man, but you got to listen, man. Everybody got to do those woo sa. You got to you got you to if if things get that crazy, you just gotta you gotta walk away. And again, why we talk about it here is that's the mother of his kids. And and my question, you know, how do you handle fighting? And I know that this is not about that, but. Mm -hmm. How do you handle fighting, like with, with with you know your wife? Like, how do you as as it relates to being around her parents or even around your kids? It's you know because even uh, it's tough. You know, depending on the situation, we may be a little bit angry at each other, and you know, um, with any fight or any altercation or any argument, you're kind of going off of someone else's energy. So I'm like that in a way like I could go about it cool but especially if I believe in what I'm saying or if I'm angry about you know the situation at hand you know I you might I, I may yell I may you know kind of you know just be aggressive in my talking but I'm not holding no knives up to yeah. people you know what I'm saying but I mean hey you know it, it's wrong it's wrong on all accounts you know, I know I've seen people saying, oh, well, I need to see the situation as to why There's he was no doing situation. that. There's no situation that you pull out a gun on your, on your, on your, uh, the mother of your children. It's as simple as that. There's just none. Um, or, or, or punch their teeth out. But, or punch their teeth out. Yes. Excuse so, me. Punching so, their teeth out. So, um, and again, let's be clear. Like, if you're in a relationship and you don't have arguments, somebody's lying. Yeah, you're right. Weird, like, yeah. You're gonna have arguments mm -hmm. in a relationship, but there's no reason for for it to go there. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, I guess we'll see what happens. Um, I hope I hope everybody in that situation is okay. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. But, but I will say, if that was my daughter, <laughs> uh, you would have used the, you would have used the guns that they hit. <laughs> it wouldn't have been it it would have been different. Is all I'm saying. Yeah, it wouldn't have played out that way. So good thing that the bodyguards were there. Nobody got hurt. Good thing for that. But you know, hopefully, like you said, um, hopefully the situation works out for the best. Uh, but we did not um, sit down and speak about today's episode to be about Fabulous and his issues. We are talking about date night. Right. Date night is very important. Very important um, with fathers. Very important with mothers. But this is thirty six chambers of fatherhood. So we're speaking to the dads. <laughs> This is like, so fuck those mothers. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn>. <laughs> no, yeah, we're, we're not shading the moms, but dads, we're talking directly to you. This is what you got to do. You got to kind of, you know, listen to yourself, look at the situation, and we got to start looking at date night. So how important is date night as a dad? Steve, I'm going to ask you, as a single dad, um, a father to a young 16, man. Six, six, grown ass 16-year-old. Yeah, grown ass 16-year-old. How do you approach date night? Um, so, <clears throat> this is interesting um, because when you are, you know, you got your, your full-time gig and you're also trying to take over the world yep. and you're trying to raise your kid and mm -hmm. you're trying to stay well-read and you're trying to go to the gym and you're trying to keep up with Game of Thrones and The Walking Dead <laughs> and, and, and that's a new show on Netflix every week, sometimes... You kind of forget, like, yo, I gotta, I gotta go on a date every mm -hmm. now and again. I gotta, I gotta have some me time. Mm -hmm. um, and and you know, being being um, a single parent is 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 a little bit different because I would imagine if you tell your your, your little guys like, yo, you know, me and mom, me and mommy going out, they they understand that. Yeah. Uh, when I say, you know, okay, I'm going out, my son asks me the same thing every time. With who? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, um, so, so, and I'm always like, well, why don't you mind your business? Yeah. And then he always says, well, if you're not going nowhere, let me come with you. <laughs> and then I always say, well, the next time you hanging out with a young lady, let me come chaperone. Yeah, there you and go. And then that shuts that conversation down real quick. But the, the real point is, um, and I don't, I, I put this question out there into the universe is, for all those single parents out there, I know we said fuck the mothers earlier. You said that. I didn't, I didn't say that. You um, said that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, what do you do when...
when you are still um, on the in the in the dating land feel like do you how soon can you bring somebody home to your house because I know when I'm dating people especially early on unless we are actually serious you're not coming to my house mm-hmm. right now why is that though um because you know over the years you know my son has met women that I've been in you know serious or semi serious relationships with. And then they come in and out of his life. And so it's like, you know, how many, what am I teaching him? And how many times is he seeing, well, this woman comes, that woman comes. And is that, how is that shaping his perception of women? Is it just like, well, they come and go and I never get too attached to women. Yeah, I, I get that that's like the macho advice that we give. But if we want to, you know, uh, teach your kids on how to build families, having them, look at women as things that are just disposable. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's good for, for the future growth of, of, of what we trying to build. You know what I mean? If you're trying to build a dynasty, then a, the family unit is important to that. So I'm very mindful of who I bring around. If I don't think you're going to be in my son's life for a while, or you're going to be a good influence on him, or you could be a friend to him, because I'm not really looking for anybody to replace his mother. Mm-hmm. But then you just not, you not going to meet him and coming to my house means you're going to meet him. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, it's a, it's a weird thing that I have to sort of, um, navigate. It's crazy. We talked about date night and I'm already talking about bringing chicks back to the crib, but that's, <laughs> that's a different, you're, that's a different discussion uh, you're looking at a little intimacy. Nice. All right. So intimacy. How, how's it? You, you are a married man. So you, you, my, I'm sure my experience is a little bit different than yours. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Um, before I dig into mine, you know, we, uh, text Sean and, you know, obviously, and, you know, we were talking about this before and we, uh, aired the show. Um, but I'm not saying anything that he wouldn't say, but I asked him when was the last time you went out? And he said, um, December and they went to go see Star Wars. So they did the movie thing. Mm. So, um, I recently just went out to date night, which inspired me to do this show, and um, we did dinner and bowling. Okay. Yeah, dinner and bowling. That was, and before that, I couldn't tell you when our last date night was. We probably went. Let me let me ask you a question. Who won? Oh, she did. Yeah, she did. Okay. She, yeah, she now, did. did you let her win, or is she just better than you? Nah, yeah, she she's just better than me. Like okay. I was trying. Like every my first bowl would always gut her out, and then right. the second one I'll hit a few pins and feel good about myself. And then we put in a small little wager. And um, so I said, word, bet. You know, that's what we're doing. And I came up, you know, shrugged my shoulders a little bit, rolled the bowling ball, and I hit a strike. And I looked at her like, yeah. Like, now I got that energy. What up? You know, the bet is on. Let's go. And she just came back and did (laughs) the same thing. I was just like, oh, man, it's going to be a rough night. But, yeah, that was the last time. You know, uh, last week was our date night. Before that, I really um, can't remember I can't remember at all, unfortunately. But um, it was good, though, because our schedules are so crazy. So <clears throat> my 9 to 5, um, like Steve, I try to take over the world. And then 3, I have two small children. So my two small children, you know, I'm constantly doing things with them. I'm constantly, you know, everybody sees I'm, I'm taking um, the oldest to basketball, uh, the younger one. I'm taking him to like different Billy B stuff and hanging out with him and, you know, watching shows with him and doing all that other stuff. And my wife, she works hard as well. So, you know, we do come home. We come home, maybe see and hang out with each other for like an hour. And then you go to sleep. <laughs> and then we go to sleep and we'll watch, you know, a show of her or mine's and mostly hers, like, you know, some BS with it. See, you, some you Kim Kardashian. Kardashian. Called, I don't know, you man. It, BS. it is BS. Not, the Kardashians is trash. Yeah, the Kardashians. That show is trash. And you know, she'll put that on. And I'll break out my phone, and then we'll go to. We don't. We go to bed. You know, we will go to sleep. So there's really no. There's no intimacy. There's no. Um, there's no relation build. Relationship building in that sense. So when we went out, um, it was a lot of she and I talking. And you know what I realized is that. While she and I are talking, there's things that she enjoys and does, you know, on her personal time that has been different since we started dating, if right. that makes sense, you know? Right. 
Um, the same thing with me, you know, when because you have both grown and evolved. Exactly. We both grown and we evolved. So, you know, we're sitting down talking about these things, sharing ideas with each other, which we do at home, but we only have that little bit of time. And then again, the craziness starts or, you know, we have to attend to one of our children or both of them. So we don't really have that relationship building time. So that's why, you know, uh, we're doing the show just to show how important it is to, um, you know, take out your ladies. So one thing I want to share is here's a synopsis of everything, right? So when we go out to these date nights, men, do we go out to these date nights for intentional dating or to get some skin? So I mean, look. So it's a fact, you know. I, we, we, <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, I get it, but like, who can who can blame you, right? No, yeah. Because here's the here's the pro- and. Again, this is not really a life that I live right now because, you know, if I want to go out, I go out and my son is at an age where I don't really need a babysitter. You know, yeah. he's, he's he's 16. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, sometimes when I go out and I go on a date, it's just like, yo, you know, I've been working so much. It's been a while. I'm going to have to dip into the well again. Yeah. Um, but also, you know. What's wrong with that? You you have to take that time. Because I would imagine, especially when you have young kids, mm-hmm. look, I'm sure you love your kids, mm-hmm. but they're cock blocks. Of course. Right? Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. And, and it is a constant battle for your wife's affection. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know, it's, you know, there's no, there's no like hierarchy or whatever, but mm-hmm. like they want her in a different way, but you want it too. I, in my household, my my, I'm not saying that they don't love her, but it's always daddy, daddy, okay. you know. Yeah. So yeah, but what I, if that's 100%. their slick way of just getting you away from her? Cock blocks is all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that could be so, true. So yeah. so the point is, if you want to take that time out and do the romance thing, you need to do that. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That is a very important part of 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 any relationship so if the goal is to you know pretend you guys are kids again um go out not that you forget about your kids but you you spend that time i think it it makes you better going back to them absolutely i mean absolutely so when i say you know is intentional dating supposed to go for the you know for the uh the ultimate you know goal is it your ultimate goal or is it that you just want to get to know your wife again so that romance can yeah, get better get down the road. Sheets. <laughs> <laughs> you want to know all of her. You want to know what's up here and what's you know. In of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. You want you want to see you want to see what's you know what's been holding out, depending on your situation. But you know, uh, we were talking about it, and when I say we, I said my wife and I. You know, she was saying, well, intentional dating. She was breaking it down what intentional dating is. So intentional dating is me wanting to go out with her in order to know her more because um, things change, right? So right. we just we just said that things change. So a lot of things that change is love language. Love okay. language changes. So at one point, she may, you know, when we were younger, give me a lot more hugs, a lot more kisses. But like you said, the, the young cock blockers came out. And they get that affection, and they get that affection from her, and they get that affection from me. So maybe, you know, uh, we start to change how we show affection to each other. Now, have you changed, though? Because, I see, I know that that's a real thing. Like, yes. people's love language change. Mm-hmm. But sometimes, you know, one person's way of showing their love will change. Meanwhile, the other person's uh, way of receiving that affection is still the same and mm-hmm. that can lead to a problem. Mm-hmm. So for example, if she's not really into hugging anymore cause she's all hugged out from hugging the kids. Yeah. My question is, do you still need them hugs? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And do you mm-hmm. feel neglected or has your, uh, your receiving of love language has that, also evolve so you don't need to hug them. No, I don't. I, you know, I, I'm a, I'm an affectionate guy. You know, I'm a big uh, teddy bear, so I do li- I do like the hugs and all that other stuff. And then sometimes I really don't want the hugs. I think the way I show affection now in a in you know in a domestic household is you know Hugging I out the garbage. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Yeah, you know I'm it. saying yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was just about to say that. So like, here's one thing. You know, love language changes. She went out with the kids, and um, they had a big vacation and all that other stuff. And when they came back, you know, um, the the car was washed, oil changed, 
Wiper blades were changed. I did laundry. I didn't clean the house because I didn't really have the time to. But, you know, I did all those little necessary stuff so she didn't have to deal with it. So, like, when she's at work and I have time, you know, I make sure I cook. I make sure I get my kids ready in bed so she, does, you know, she could just come home to a house where it's not, you know, chaotic. You know, so, that's my so, that's my so, way of showing so, affection. So when you when you did that though later on that that day, uh, I was like winking at her, like yeah, you know what I'm saying, like it you know smells good in here, for. right? <laughs> you know it smells good in here, right? Shoot, that that food tasted good, great, right? But yeah, so love language changes. So you know, um, you know those date nights are necessary now. Um, how often one should go on a date night? You know, so as a single man, how often should you go on a date night? Uh like I said, sometimes I gotta remind myself. Remind yourself, Jesus. Um, no, nah, man, it's just like there's there's so much to accomplish, um, and again, I think a, a, a lot of that comes from you know I probably should have thought about getting married earlier, but now it's like you know again I'm trying to become a supervillain, and that don't happen overnight, so Word. I do have to remind myself that. So usually for me, date night will just happen. Maybe this this just means I'm going to hang out with somebody two weeks once a month mm-hmm. just because I'm I'm always working on something you know you 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 know the side projects why don't I plug them now mm-hmm. all the other shows on the R Square Network we got a game coming out we got a comic book coming out Ooh. and and we got a novel coming out and maybe a cartoon later on so Ooh. there's a lot of things happening and, and sometimes it's hard but to to answer the question again. Um, I think you you should make time. I think you should do it like once a week. Once a week. I, I think I think people should take time as a single man or in a, in, a, in, a, um, in, a, in a if if I was in a married relationship if, or just living with somebody, mm-hmm. I, once a week at least. Okay. At the, at the very least. I, I respect that. I respect that one hundred percent. Now, yeah. how about you? Uh, Good yeah, uh, once a week. Once a week would be great. You know what I'm saying? Once she said a week. it would be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> once a week would be amazing, you know? Um, it could, I think we could definitely pull it out, but just sometimes that energy just, it ain't there. You know, the week beats you up, kids beat you up, and then that Saturday night, Saturday night comes around and you know that you don't have anything to do the next day, that you could sleep in a little bit longer, or that Friday night rolls around and you're like, damn, that Netflix show is popping. Sometimes, you know, you and the lady but, may but just lay down and just say F it. No, I feel like you can fall into a groove like that. Yes, I was about to get into that. It yes. It's too late. And then mm-hmm. you're just mad for no reason because you feel like, you know, life is wasting away. Absolutely. You know I mean? 100%. Also, what's also important, and we talked about this before, but on top of date night, you need like the you night as well. Oh, right? 100%. You need I have the that. cave night or where you doing fantasy football or doing something else. Mm-hmm. You know why? Because if you have that night, and I would say not like so now I'm getting a little technical with this. Mm-hmm. If you have your own night, like mm-hmm. just before the date night, and mm-hmm. you have some you time where you can, you know, get to know who you are, experience something new, that gives you fun stories to tell on the date night. Yeah, you know nah, yeah, hundred so, percent. I agree so with you. You have to go out, experience things with your friends, do your own thing because what happens is so many, and again, obviously. This is the, the single guy saying this. But what happens <laughs> in so many relationships is, oh, I remember that story when you was out with your boys and one of them threw up. Yeah. And then you tell the same story all the time. Oh, I remember that time when you was out on in in on vacation and you know that this thing happened. And I remember that time where you 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 won a bet and you won fifty dollars. Like I don't want to hear about it anymore. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So you have to make new stories so that you can constantly reinvent. Because the whole purpose of of date night is to continue to make it feel fresh. Yes. But if your date night is just like, well, we go into the movies, we watch that movies, we went out to dinner. That's you could have did that shit in your house with Netflix. I was just about to get into that. I was about to get into that. One hundred percent. Get into it, good sir. (laughs) No, no, I was about to get into that. Well, what constitutes as a good date? You know, like is the dinner and movie thing still a thing? Dinner and movie is popping. I love dinner and movie, but at the same time, I walk away from dinner and movie, I drop like. Anywhere in between like one hundred and fifty dollars or so. Where are you going to dinner, man? Yo, AMC is expensive Jesus. as hell. AMC. Also, you need to get a movie pass first of all. Well, yeah, I know movie pass is popping. I should get it, but we well, sidetrack movie pass. Can I just get the one movie pass and it's ten dollars a month just for me? Yes. Or oh, okay. Yes. All right. Uh, well, eh. 
But you know, I go to the movies by myself all the time. See, that's you. Yeah, see, that's your you time. Maybe I should try that out. But um, no, like AMC between myself, my wife, right? Just two people. That tickets what fifteen fifteen. So that's thirty bucks. Right. We're gonna get the popcorn. Right. And then we share a Slurpee with each other. That's right. always been our thing. Oh, of course. Cool. You have to. You have so to. that's like sixty dollars. She can't take none of your nachos though, right? No, nah, I don't mess with I nachos. Have, it's I too messy. A, I have a rule. Mm-hmm. I don't care if I love you and I would take a bullet for you. You can't have none of my nachos. Nah, too messy for me. See, you're uh, not doing that. Right? <laughs> nah, not too messy right. for me. I used to be a nacho a nacho dude when I was a kid. But so that's let's just say roughly sixty dollars right there in the movies. Right. And then you walk away. I mean, well, before that, usually you would have to do it before that. You go out to eat. And now he has the thing. Maybe I'm I'm going a little overboard with the with the sixty dollars for the for the dinner. But at the same time, you want to have a few drinks because you're feeling yourself. You're out. You know what it is for me. See, I don't drink, and that's ah, really the big go. thing when you go out. Yeah. Um. But I do recommend going to dinner after the movie. After okay. Why? I mean, if you're like me, you watch a movie and you want to actually discuss it and break it down. Especially, and again, you're married, so maybe it's different. Like nah, yeah, we, we always break it. Yeah, nah, yeah, we break but it down. If a if a first if a first date from again, I know this is not your situation. <laughs> no, we want to hear the single uh, man uh, uh, situation. I, I want to hear. First it. date is movie then dinner because worst case scenario, if you have nothing to talk about, you, you can talk actually about talk movie. about the movie, which will lead you to other conversations. Hmm. Now. As far as what constitutes a date, at this stage and in grown ass man life, I kind of don't consider going to dinner in the movies a date unless it's like something like we really wanted to see. So where do you go? Where where do you take your your you ladies? Switch it up. Mm-hmm. Do like a cooking class. Take a Ooh, dancing lesson. I'm about go, to write that go, down. Go do the um the paint bar. You know what What's I'm paint saying? bar? So basically, they they serve like wine and drinks, and you actually all it's like a whole class. You get together and you paint. You like actually make a painting, right? Okay. And so you know you and the, and and the misses or, or whoever you there with can go and take those paintings home, hang them up on the wall, hmm. and it's a thing. You know what I mean? It's it's it is when you taking a class together or doing something different. You know what I mean? Go on a boat ride. Just do something you've never done so that you both can experience it and make a new memory. Mm. Part of going to the movies and dinner all the time, that's, again, that can become routine and it could, could become like, well, I guess Thursday night's date night. Dang. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, no, I feel you. I feel you. I, 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 fi- I fell in the trap of the, the, we would do dinner than the movie. I fell into that trap many of times. You know, I almost fell into it, you know, our previous date night. I just said, you know, hey, let's go out to eat. Easy. <laughs> and she yeah, she was like, yo, let's let's go check out um let's go see if there was something there was something around that she wanted to do. But then we were like, hey, we're closer to this bowling alley, so let's do that. And you know, it just opened up the whole night. You know what I'm saying? Now we're laughing, we're joking together. So yeah. So, you know, for our men for our men that are listening, the dads for date night you know, do you do the dinner in the movie and just leave it at that and then go about your lives or do you switch it up? Or if you're only doing dinner in the movie, you should switch it up. Yeah. Listen, and, and the other thing is step outside of your comfort zone. Okay, right? what are you talking about now, man? Now what, if what are we you, doing now? If you like I don't dance, mm-hmm. right? So if I'm if I wanna just spice things up, I'm gonna say, let's go, let's go take a dancing lesson. What, you know like what ballroom I mean? dancing? Yeah, why I, I say or, that as a joke or, because or, my or, wife was begging me to do ballroom so you dancing. Should do it because even though you might have two left feet like I do, mm-hmm. right? Uh, I can only do a one and a half step. I don't even do a two step, right? But the, even the fact that she may be laughing at you will be a fun thing that you both can laugh about. Yeah. You know, unless your ego is so crazy that you can't have. You know, and, then I, and then I, and then while she's laughing at me, I pull out a, you a, pull knife, out a knife, and like fab. Yeah, like what do you want? <laughs> what are you doing? Hey, what are you doing here? I got a no. bullet for each of you. And, Talking and, and, to the and, and, to the dance room uh, classroom. And listen, it's also important. Like, do go to go to a sports game, play 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 pool, go roller skating, just. Different things. Mm-hmm. Try to at, at least, you know what I mean. And again, I'm not saying the same. Thing. I love going to the movies, but you know that that's just a that's what I do in my spare time. I also do it because you know I do a movie show. But you know, <laughs> you know what I mean. And it's also important for her to come to you, out with you to do something that she may not be interested in. So and I keep coming up with with fantasy football just because 
that's on my head. Mm. If you're in a fantasy football league and it's it, and it's a time, have her come with you one night to, to do that weird thing. And mm-hmm. then go with her when she wants to go to an opera. You know what I mean? Yeah. If, it's, yeah. it's, if it's something, go get pedicures together. Fuck that. Okay, yo, Steve you know is I mean? yo. Write this down, Dad. So, yo, Steve. So let's let's build a perfect. Let's say if our dads out there, they have a good. Let's be realistic. We have a good four to five hour window of time away from the kids where they could sit down with their lady. Where would the the dads go? Where do you recommend? Where do we start off with? Fucking for three and a half hours. No. Okay. <laughs> all right. So now, all right. No. That, uh, it, 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 dad's out there. They're like, well, I could, I could pull off like three and a half minutes. I don't know what this dude talking about. You know. You take a nap. Come back. Yeah. Get one more in before you no, no, no. Okay. No, honestly, honestly. Um. Where we? I, yeah. Where? Where? Do, where does a, a man start out? Well, yeah. and and we also have to look at the season too. It's right. a big thing. We're from so, New York, so the seasons so are really be, tricky. It could be cold outside. Could be cold. Could be summertime. I think summer, summertime dating is like the, the easiest thing in the world. So let's... A summertime date could just be going for a walk. Easy. You'll, you'll Super duper out. easy, yeah. But listen, I always like to start things off with a museum. Hmm. No okay. plan after that. You go to the museum, you see something, you guys will have some conversations... And then just walk around the city. You will bump into things if you don't have ideas. I think it's very fun to play um, games, right? Mm-hmm. So maybe you want to go to a Broadway show, which is very different from going to a movie. But you, 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 you playing competitive games like playing pool, like going bowling, like um, you know ice skating, whatever. Um, do those things. Go, go, go roller skating. Go, mm. go, go for a bike ride. I don't know. Just things that um, would have you doing a, a, a thing together and being active because okay. you, you can come back after that. So, but ideal date, let's, let's, let's put it out there. Okay. Ideal date. They have four so, hour window and yeah, it's okay. winter time in wherever city they're at, but let's just say it's New York. Okay. Start off with a museum. Museum. Boom. Boom. What, mu- right. what museum? Start with the MoMA. The MoMA? Okay. I get in there for free, but that's it. Ooh, <laughs> um, the flex, the um, flex is too strong. But you start out, you start out there, and then you find you 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 go to a restaurant. Mm-hmm. From the restaurant, what kind of restaurant? What are we eating? What 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 would a man order? Where are we where would he take? Would he take it to Johnny Rockets? No. Nah, nah, not a Johnny Rockets nah. dude. I'm saying if, I'm saying if you're in Manhattan. If you're in Manhattan. Because so not everybody Manhattan. got the budget to not go to Johnny Rockets. So I don't want to shit on Johnny Rockets. Look, listen, maybe you want to take it to Applebee's. It's all good. Or Chili's. Chili's listen, is really good. They got some yeah. good drinks. Yeah. Happy hour. Happy hour. You know there I mean? you go. Set but, it off. But I do think it's important, like, do some kind of a class, right? Whether that class is a cooking class where you make a meal together. Mm. Whether that class is a dancing class where you learn salsa or you learn ballroom dancing you learn something right Mm -hmm. um and then sometimes if it's not cold just go for a walk because the things that you see especially in the city going for a walk will lead to so many conversations absolutely and i i I honestly think some of the best dates is where you actually just talk Mm -hmm. right and and a lot of getting to get to that conversation where you're actually talking and not about the everyday mundane things that you normally talk about. Like so, kids. Yeah. Can sometimes just be sparked by... You have to sort of break through that shell. Yeah. The shell of monotony. Mm-hmm. So when you have different scenery, like art, like a class, like a, a game, uh, like a competitive game, or like uh, just walking through the city and seeing the sights, that shell of monotony will be broken, mm-hmm. and then you'll be surprised at the things you become talk about at least in my experience boom so i'm asking you because i'm horrible at this i am the dinner and movie dude i am that i am that person and yeah i know i am basic and before you know i think we we would do cooler things like i took her to uh, before children i should say um you know we did the museums we would we would do fun stuff but now go to a trampoline park i'm not doing that 
Okay. Well, yeah, no, yeah, we should do that. Yeah. But then I feel bad that you know the kids aren't there. We'll both feel bad. I'm like, yep. damn, yeah. they, yo, damn, they should be. They get everything enjoy. all the time. <laughs> they get, they do get everything. <laughs> but you know, I was thinking about like an ideal Indoor date. Indoor skydiving. Indoor, yes, I was thinking about an ideal date. I think um the last time what we what were we doing? Damn, I thought about something that we were we wanted to do together. Um, but I, I was trying to build an ideal date. And one of the one of the things I said, if I had a four hour window of something to do where it could just be my wife and I, it would be yes. One of them would be a museum, absolutely a hundred percent. Two, go kart riding. Go kart absolutely. riding goes into your competitiveness, absolutely. where you guys can you know compete and you know um, yeah get boost your adrenaline up, racing your your spouse and other people. Um, food is always a go to, but also um, you know grab something sweet. You know, something like ice cream or something like that. Always brings out the best in people. Food is always Listen, I'm on 100%. this campaign against Big Sugar. What are you talking about? Big Sugar, man. I think it's killed more people than war and poverty. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> but let's kill ourselves a little slower okay. with, some, with some cookies and cream ice cream. <laughs> let me just put you on to the, 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 the um, insidiousness of Big Sugar. You ever read the labels when you buy some food, like you buy a package like cereal or whatever? I don't really eat cereal. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Mm -hmm. You see how much calories it is. You see what percentage of sodium the daily value is. Mm -hmm. The only thing on there that's listed that doesn't tell you what percentage of the daily value that is is recommended for a 2,000 calorie diet is sugar. Mm Mm-hmm. Right. So they'll say, OK, this is 12 percent of your suggested daily sodium intake. Mm. This is 13 percent of your cholesterol intake. This is your this is 14 percent of your of your, you know, fat intake or whatever. Mm-hmm. Sugar. 30 grams. That's it. That's you have 30 no grams. idea. You have no idea. how much. <laughs> That's interesting. And that is listen, corn stocks are subsidized by the government where more than anything healthy and they use corn Mm -hmm. to make corn syrup high fructose corn syrup all that all that stuff is subsidized because sugar is sort of like an addiction that is it's like a drug that we just absolutely ourselves to have so when when you said something sugary it just put you like god damn it they strike again (laughs) (laughs) my the conspiracy theorist and you just flared up you're like ah no but um i you know not to get too sidetracked off of this there was a doctor that said um, people don't get fat off of fat from animals. They get fat from the sugar, the sugar yes, that they intake. That's absolutely true. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. Sick. So don't take her out to, to get ice cream, damn. Unless that's your goal to try to kill her. And take her oh, oh, my gosh. <laughs> That was Fab's goal. He should have just threw ice cream at Emily B's. Okay. Uh, that's not funny. I'm joking. I'm sorry. That's that's Excuse insensitive. Me a shot for that one. That's <laughs> insensitive. That's insensitive. So yeah, all right. So cool. We have a four hour window, and in four hours you could take your spouse to either a museum. Well, you can take her to a museum as well as a go kart. Um, you know, whatever fun house or whatever Some the case may be. Activity that is not just sitting down. You exactly. Get- you want to get uh, the blood pumping. Get the blood pumping so for that, what's happening yeah, for, what, for what is to come. <laughs> okay. Um. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Uh, no, I'm joking. Um, so, yeah. So, you, now with your intentional dating, you, you're building with your wife and you're building with your spouse. You're building with your girlfriend, whoever the case may be. Um, you know, things may lead into something else because you both are feeling the energy. You guys like each other. And um, if... Hopefully you still like it. Hopefully. That was just about to say, yeah. And if, you know, the the, <laughs> the date nights don't work, um, that's for a different episode. Maybe you guys should um, figure something else out. Oh now, Steve, when you're out with your yes, lady sir. friends, do right. you talk about your child? Do you talk about your kid? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Don't give a shit. Isn't that like a cardinal sin in like dating? Nope. They don't mm-hmm. like it, so what? Okay. That is the heir to the throne. Okay. Everything right. I do is for that guy. Okay. So you don't like it, fuck you. Oh man. Sorry. Dang, he got he got heated on that one. <laughs> Holy crap. All right. Okie dokie. Now, um, do you date other women that have kids or you know, well, we had this conversation, but maybe when they when you're dating them in a date setting, are you okay with them talking about their kid? Yeah. Okay. Now, listen, I don't want to hear like every little 
thing about your kid. If it's like a, a funny story, um, just like I'm not going to tell you every, you know, little detail. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, look, if you have if you have children, right, they are really your number one priority mm -hmm. in your life, right? Every, everything, is, everything is secondary to that. So the people in your life should come in understanding it. Mm -hmm. It should not come into the situation thinking I'm going to take you away, you know, from your progeny. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, so, and this is another thing that I've come to a place now where if I'm dating somebody, I'm kind of actually looking, hoping that they do have kids just because sometimes people without kids cannot understand that sort of love and responsibility that you have to that you are tasked with when when you have a child, right? Mm -hmm. So, so sometimes people with no kids will be like, oh, well, why? okay, I know you got to do this stuff for your kids, but like all the time? Yeah. Or, or they'll, they'll start to think, well, you know, the kid takes attention away from me. And I don't want anybody that's just like, well, I guess I want to be with you, so I guess I got to deal with your kids. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. I mean? You don't want that so, energy. So, so, so I find that people with children sort of understand a little bit more and then you get into the element of you know my kids versus your kids and that's a whole yeah, it gets other weird. thing mm -hmm. but i need people or when i date somebody it is that it is people that i believe can understand the the love and responsibility that go along with with having a child and i'm not i'm not coming at like you know sing like uh Women that don't have kids. I'm, some women make great stepmothers that don't. Have You'll kids. take them too, right? Um, yeah, as long as the the, <laughs> the 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 you know, as long as I feel like there's a genuine interest mm -hmm. in in the well being and development of of me 2.0, as well as me. Um, and again, you don't just go into dating somebody like, yo, you're gonna be the mother of my kid. I'm not. I'm not looking for that. Yeah, but don't do that. If you're not gonna be a good influence, that's all I want to know. Are mm -hmm. you? Would you be a good influence mm -hmm. um, on on you know on, on on my kid? And if I feel like that answer is yes, then we can move to the next level. Okay. That doesn't mean you get to meet him yet, or you get to come to the crib yet. Mm -hmm. But that's the first thing. I don't. I don't even. Um, I don't even like date anybody seriously that I feel like wouldn't have a good relationship. Um, you know what I mean? Because. You know, some people, and that's fine. Some people are like focus on career and kids are not their thing. That's totally okay. And some women out there don't want to date a guy that, that, that has kids. And that's, you know, that's okay too. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. But Angry you know, today. <laughs> for, for, for me, you know, I got to feel like you understand what that's like. And it's usually women that have, you know, at least one child that, that okay. can understand that. Okay, I can respect that. Now, let's just say you're a dad listening to this and you say, yo, I ain't got that problem, man. My wife and I go on a tons of dates. We go once a week. I take her go-kart riding. We play mini golf. Uh, we go out to going. different eats. We go on vacays, all this other stuff. So you guys don't have problems with that. However, you guys have problems with making friends. That's also a thing between couples. Couples don't make friends uh, because they don't go out with other couples, I guess, in a sense. So um, there's group dating as well. You can also look into group dating. Now, I have I'm a friend. not a fan of that. See, there you go. We have someone who doesn't know how to make friends. No, I'm, no. Jo I'm joking. I'm joking. Why don't you like group dating? You know why? Because it, it always ends up feeling like it's some kind of affection competition. Like, oh, look how they're doing. You know what I mean? Like, they're so happy. Why can't we be like that? And it's just like, I don't, it's weird. It's, it, I just, I find it, I find it weird. It, okay. Okay. I, I can, I can see that. Like one of my friends and, um, he texted me this week and, um, I think he's, he just, uh, just from knowing him, um, he, he dates his wife and, um, he dates his wife. No, no, yeah, I'm sorry. Excuse me. He he takes out his wife often. You can see it from social media because I'm looking at First at, of all, at I that know lens. People that are married and separated and dating their wife. True. <laughs> and don't live together. I just know that they live together. They have a beautiful child together. Whatever the case may be. But he um, goes on dates with his wife. From what I could see from social media, because I could view through that lens, and also your man's always inviting me to some uh, some dope ass uh, group dating stuff that taboo 
Um, oh, very fun. Yeah, super duper fun. And he's saying, hey, I'm inviting you and your wife. Bring another couple along, and I have these couples, and we're going to have play Taboo at, at usually, our house. That's usually the cover for, like, uh, Orgy Sex Party. But I don't know. <laughs> that's how it happens. That's they how just it happens. tell you, just come they, over. They just come over, and taboo. then they trap you this into it. This is Taboo, right? <laughs> this is Taboo. Next thing you know, somebody's grabbing places that ain't supposed to be grabbed. It's, it's And scary. you're like, yo, what's going on? Did, did that ever happen to you? No comment. Oh, <laughs> my goodness. This is, this is turning into a... Uh, Something serious. Turn down the volume and uh, walk away from your wife and kids. No, I'm joking. So, um, yeah. So you also have the option of group dating. So, what's a perfect group date? Spades. End of story. Nah, so, man. Nah, and I, and I only say that because I I've no I've witnessed um spades gone wrong. So I'm gonna leave the names no, out. That's that's a gonna... relationship going wrong. <laughs> yeah, no, you no. If you, if you don't have that level of nonverbal communication with your spouse or your girlfriend, something else is wrong. Listen. So if y'all can't be Spades partner. I think you need to rethink the relationship or go see some relationship counselors. That's all I'm saying. Listen, I'm not gonna name the parties involved in this story. But you know who you are. But you know who you are, because every time we talk about it, we laugh. All we have to say is, you know, something that happened that day. However, I've witnessed a spades couple argue. Girl gets up, leaves. At the time, the gentleman may or may have not had long hair. And the girl went away, released her frustrations to her sister, came back. And was like, yo, I'm gonna let this man know not to ever play me again. Grabbing him by the hair while everybody's playing space. Like, oh, what's going on over here? Grabbing him by the hair. So like, don't you ever try to play me like that again. Okay. So that's group spades gone wrong. And it was, it was, and to be fair, it was, it was um, the 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 group that they were playing with weren't necessarily uh, a couple. You know, they weren't a couple at all. Um, but they, they kind of antagonized the whole situation. They saw the, the tempers flare up between the, the couple, and they just played off of it, played off of it, played off of it. Let me ask you a question, though. If it gets to the pulling hair stage and the getting up and walking away stage, Yeah, listen, 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 that, that is not my business. Some people egg them on to get to that point. Hey. They wasn't even arguing about space. There's no head. perfect, yeah, listen, there's no it's perfect not, situation out there, but situation. I'm going to let you know. Do not play spades <laughs> with, him, know, with your spouse and other spouses. Because every space, and I just talk about a physical uh, altercation that I witnessed with spades. Every space game that I part, I, 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 you know, played in, um, I've witnessed. It always just gets a little, it always gets a little too wild. So that's why I'm like, man, yo, leave the spades alone. Put down the cards. Yo, go on um one of these um group dating apps, and there is such a thing, um, like Bumble. I think Bumble is one of them. Right. Yeah, and they're so actually this, suing um, another dating app called Match Group. Match. Okay. Yeah. So, so you also have those options. Yeah. No, it's cool. Play Spades though. If, <laughs> yeah. if you can't play Spades together, then you you got to work on some other stuff. And I think Spades can be therapeutic to let you know how to be um, emotionally intelligent. Okay. All right. Because it teaches you how to pick up cues that you should have been paying attention to. In, in your relationship or marriage in the first place. And if you don't, it's getting you're getting um uh knives uh being thrown at you or, or you you're know, getting your hair pulled. Or you're getting your hair pulled or so, your teeth punched out again, joke. Um domestic violence is not a joke, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's not a joke. It's not a joke. It's just crazy that you know, why would you react that way? <laughs> but it's just uh, whatever. It is what it is. Yeah. Um but um Steve, can you um let us go with some parting words. Okay. Boom. Let's give myself a single here. All right. So, um, men, women, do not ever settle. I get that you have you can settle down, but don't settle in your situation or in your relationship. Mm. Do not ever get com. I can't say the word comfortable, comfortable, whatever. You know what I mean. Do not get complacent. It is important that you continue to reinvent your relationship with your significant other. Because when you are happy and learning 
and experiencing new things with your your the mother of your child or the father of your child or your wife or your girlfriend or whatever it is that will that energy is something that your children will pick up on right you don't want your kids to see you not having any goals and just being stuck in a routine because i i in my opinion it will uh teach them that life is just a monotonous thing your kids want to see you happy they want to see you doing things because that will spur their imagination for them to go out and do things in the future and also just for you as a human being go out spend time reinvent yourself do not netflix and chill all the time mm -hmm. step outside of your comfort zone and and go out and pretend that you're you're dating like it's brand new again and again play spades with <laughs> this is my part in words forget everything i just said learn to play spades with your significant other because it will teach you how to be emotionally intelligent it will teach you how to communicate and i guarantee you guys will be a hap have a happier, healthier relationship if you can play space. Boom, 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 boom. Flex bombs all over. Steve just dropped it on you to piggyback off of that. Do when you're when you're doing these dates, go for intentional dating to get to know each other again. Or if you guys do know each other, go out for the group dating. Hobbies change, so when you're in when your you time and you're doing different hobbies, it allows you to build with your partner, to build with your wife, your spouse, whoever, um, so you could keep everything fresh and new, just like Steve said. And um, if you're brave enough to take your partner through a game of spades, ja bless. And yes. that is it. And also, if people ever invite you out on a group date, make oh sure it's God. not like a sex claim. <laughs> now, oh um, tell them where they can find you, good sir. Um, you can find me on got Instagram, <laughs> and I forgot my Instagram handle. It is Peddler CFP. Uh, no, no, that that one changed, buddy. That's gone. Okay. No, nah, yeah, I don't go by Peddler. Yo, listen, man, I am full blown thirty six chambers of fatherhood. Uh, I've embodied this. So, okay. I've embodied at, this. At thirty six C O F underscore. Yes, thirty six C O F underscore. Catch us on Instagram, go on Facebook, 36 Chambers of Fatherhood, catch this video on YouTube, on the R Squared Network, 36 Chambers of Fatherhood has its own um, channel under the, the network, under the umbrella, that's what we're rocking with, um, we're not on Twitter, however, uh, yeah, man, that's what we're doing, that's how we're doing it. All right, all right, all right. And myself, I'm, I'm uh, Steve Johnson, and you can find me at Steve A.M. Johnson on your favorite social media network, as Ooh. long as it's not Snapchat. Um, you pick and choose. Uh, also, you can catch me later today, actually very soon, at, on On The Real, where we keep you up to date on all the latest goings on in TV and movies, after I just said, don't be going to the movies every week. <laughs> <laughs> but you can <laughs> use that as your other. hobby. Yes, this is my time when I go to the movies. Uh, but today, we are going to be talking about the rumors that Meryl Streep might be replacing Carrie Fisher as General Leia Organa in the new Star Wars film. Ooh. It's just a rumor, but we're going to break it down for you. Where did the rumor come from? You're going to have to watch. I can't. Ooh. I can't. <laughs> come on, man. On <laughs> the to real. Do, try to do my marketing thing here. I feel you. I feel you. On the real. On the real. On the real. On the real. Do you guys talk about um, popular shows that are, are, are happening now? We are you do, a fan of Atlanta? We do. I'm not. I, I am a fan, although I've never seen a single episode. Oh, Don't right. judge me. <laughs> um, but we do. We actually also do a weekly Walking Dead review show. Say that three times fast. And when Game of Thrones comes back, we're going to be reviewing that, and we're going to pick up some new shows. We may do Westworld also. Oh, Westworld is fire! If you never watched so, um, it, if um, if uh, you guys are all well, you know, if you and your wife, you guys are all dated out, and you guys go on so many dates that you you don't need to listen to this. Um, catch the you know Westworld, catch Game of Thrones, catch Walking Dead. If you haven't watched two out of the three, I would say that you live under a rock, but whatever, it's your thing. Um, but yo, we're out. Or or or, or catch on the real. <laughs> or catch or, on or the this. real. <laughs> on the real. And what's the other one? Uh, uh, the second page. If you're into politics, we break all those things down. It's it's like a a, a Trump hate fest, but we try <laughs> not to. But it's it's hard. Yo, R Squared Network has 36 Chambers of Fatherhood. Second page. And, and on the real. Those and are the more, three shows. And more to come. And more to come. So all rock right, with us, baby. Folks, that is all. That's all she wrote. Peace.
Brow. 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 Listen to the kids. Listen to the kids. Brow. 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 Listen to the kids, bro.